Well, let's continue on with this. Two armed drones targeting a U.S. military base in Iraq earlier this morning. There were no reported deaths or damage, but there's been at least 24 attacks targeting U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria in the last two weeks. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu out with an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal, and he says uh, it's, it's called the Battle of Civilization. This isn't only Israel's war. If Hamas and Iran win, you will be their next target, but we will prevail. I want to bring in Michigan Congressman John James. He's a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee and an Iraq War veteran. Congressman, good morning to you. You know, Netanyahu also says this is a true, and I'm going to say, a quote, turning point for leaders and nations. It's a time for all of us to decide if we are willing to fight for a future of hope and promise or surrender to tyranny and terror. You fought in Iraq. Here we are again, uh, back in the Middle East. What is your take on all of this, and how concerned are you for your, uh, for your colleagues uh, that serve in the U.S. military as, this, as this, all of this escalates for the U.S.? Yeah, I'm a combat veteran, um, fought in Iraq. And uh, when I woke up this morning, I went to my, my children's rooms, uh, 10, 8, and 4. And I kissed them on the forehead, and I said, Happy Halloween. Uh, and nothing is scarier to me as a combat veteran and, and a parent uh, than the thought of sending my sons to the same war that I left. Uh, unless we get Iran in check right now, uh, we are going to see uh, an escalation in the region, and we are going to see the same wars around the world continue to, uh, to spread um, as a result of the failure of this administration uh, and past Democrat administrations to hold Iran accountable. We will be marking up uh, bills to the House Foreign Affairs uh, Committee this week to hold Iran accountable. Um, and looking at laser focus on sanctions. Uh, by failing to enforce sanctions, we are infusing, uh, the administration is infusing billions of dollars, 30 to 60 billion dollars in oil revenue back into Tehran that is, uh, that is supporting Hezbollah, that's supporting Hamas, that is destabilizing the, the, uh, the Middle East. I saw Iranian-trained uh, militia uh, in Baghdad. Uh, I saw the kidnappings. I witnessed the beheadings. We saw this uh, killing Americans recently. Uh, and, and so we absolutely need to get a hold on this. And the Biden administration needs to absolutely enforce these sanctions, rather than sending $6 billion and unfreezing it. Uh, for uh, that goes directly to uh, to terrorism. Iran is a state sponsor of terrorism, and the administration is failing to hold them accountable. Congress and HVAC will do our part, and this Biden administration better do theirs. Well, I have two questions there. First, do you think that there's appetite from your colleagues, your Democratic colleagues, uh, to now push for further pressure on Iran? I would hope so, but this is Washington and politics. But the the other question for you is these hostages. Uh, and you just mentioned this and what you saw when you were in Iraq, because we are seeing ISIS-style executions, again, uh, and that have been carried out. John Kirby has been facing questions on how many U.S. hostages are actually being held by Hamas. Uh, watch what he said. How many Americans have you confirmed in that time are actually hostages? <laughs> Less than 10. That's not a number. I want a number from you. Less than 10. Why can't you give a number? James, I've given you an answer. What's your next question? He wouldn't, he wouldn't say. We don't have a number? Is that possible? No. No, no, it, it is possible because of the ineptitude of this administration. You asked me two questions. One, are my Democratic colleagues willing to call this out? The answer is no. They're not willing to, as a body, uh, look at humanity and put that forward. No, they are not willing, as a body, to call out Hamas, a terror organization that is responsible for the deaths of countless innocent people, to include a 23-year-old who was recently beheaded after being paraded naked uh, in the public square. And, and we're supposed to continue to support women's rights. Where are they now supporting the bodily autonomy of a woman who just lost her head as a result of Hamas? No, they will not call them out as a body. And no. Oh, you see the Biden administration continue to deploy these childish tactics of hiding a report card from, from their parents. This is not child's play. This is war. Americans deserve to have an answer for how many Americans could be held hostage, how many Americans could be at risk, and who we hold accountable for putting Americans in that situation. So, no, Democrats will not stand up against terrorism. It's up to Republicans in the majority in the House to do so. 
And no, this administration continues to fail, and you see that from Afghanistan to Israel. And so we have to stand up. We have to do that from the House. We need to take back the Senate, and we need to win the White House so that our allies trust us and our enemies fear America once again. Gosh. Uh, Joe Pinion's on set with me, Congressman. He's got a question for you. Congressman, obviously, it's, it's well documented uh, that the administration is just bumbling abroad. But I want to look domestically here. When you recognize that going back to 2021, down in Fairfax, Virginia, where we had parents that were effectively referred to as domestic terrorists by our own government, that we had the attorney general ask for a 30-day expedited review of those parents down in Virginia, uh, because apparently questioning the curriculum of your, student, of your children uh, is akin to a terrorist act. How is it that we have people over there yelling from the river to the sea at Grand Central Station That's in right. New York City, uh, 3,000 people on the Brooklyn Bridge. You've got Israel, you've got Jewish students uh, basically uh, held up in a library. At what point is this FBI going to hold those actions in contempt? And if not, what are the actions that can be taken by you and your colleagues to make sure that we don't have that level of what I would call a terrorist apologist uh, running amok in this United States that we love? Anti-Semitism is, uh, is an amorphous uh, evil uh, that, uh, that continues to move throughout the generations, and, and it, it continues to be whatever um, people believe it is. Uh, we actually have to call, uh, call out anti-Semitism as, as the, one of the worst and oldest forms of bigotry uh, in the world, uh, and we start by calling out anybody uh, who would uh, uh, support and abet this, this hateful speech. Uh, we need to make sure that, uh, that we are calling out Israel's right to defend itself and calling out terrorists, specifically Hamas terrorists, uh, who will, uh, will do this. And people who can't separate uh, those who would, who would kill babies and innocent people um, uh, uh, should not be in the, in the, uh, in the halls of, of government making decisions. Congressman uh, John James, your voice is so appreciated this morning on all of this. Uh, and, uh, thank you for your service, uh, both in, in, in Iraq, but also in Washington. And please come back and keep us posted uh, on what you're working on as far as that Iranian markup. That would be, um, hopefully it can go somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you, sir.